Good afternoon, collectors and friends. Welcome to Trading Card Therapy, episode number 40. That's right. Some people might think we're over the hill, but not in the podcast world. We're just getting started with our 40th episode and really appreciate you tuning in today. If it's your first time, thank you for joining us. If you're returning, I'm very grateful and appreciative of you supporting Trading Card Therapy. You can find us live every Thursday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And usually in about 24 hours or so, we'll upload it to generally wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts, such as Apple, Spotify, and other platforms like that. So as I mentioned yesterday on my Layton's Loft podcast, I had a very interesting appointment this morning. Family came in from the tri-state area that had well over 300 strip cards that have all been in the same family since they were issued in the early 1900s. This one not only had a lot of quantity, which of course having over 300 strip cards is very impressive. In fact, there's only one other strip card collection that we've purchased here at Just Collect that comes to mind of similar ilk. And it was a few years ago, I was living in Hoboken. My son Crosby was a little bit younger. And we had someone from Jersey City who was doing some restoration on their home, break into the walls, thought they were only finding insulation. And ultimately what they found was a strip card collection, hundreds of strip cards from the early 1900s. If you want to read about that story, check it out on our blog at blog.justcollect.com. We have that and actually hundreds of other stories about many of the wonderful collections that we bought over the last 20 years. So when I sat down with this family, I had an inkling as to what they had because they had contacted us initially with, I believe, a handful of Bay Ruths and a handful of Ty Cobb strip cards along with the images. So we were able to put together just a rough estimate on a handful of the cards they had. They were intrigued. They wanted to know more. They explained to them it would be best off if we got together in person. And so because they were able to make the trek here, they scheduled an appointment with yours truly. And that appointment took place just a little while ago. Now, I'd love to tell you I bought the collection already and I'd be showing it off today. But we never know what's going to happen here. Excuse me. Uh, at Get this out of the way. Or at least my sweatshirt. Pardon me. Um, we uh, wanted to evaluate the cards. And of course, we're hoping to purchase them. But you never know. So they came down. And we went off the initial evaluation um, at first, which, like I said, did have a handful of Bay Ruths and Thai Cops. Now, strip cards, if you're not familiar with them, were issued for the reason they're called strip cards in strips, but actually almost like in a small sheet, right, depending on which issue uh, it was. And it's rumored that store owners maybe tore them up, ripped them up, and, you know, cut them to sell them to, to kids and to, to folks and the patrons. Other people believe the kids did that. I don't really know what's true or what's not, um, but we did interview uh, the gentleman and his wife who had found these cards in his wife's mother's home, and at least in his own research, he told us what he thought he found, and so that was interesting. So if we're able to buy the collection, which I think we are, um, we will share some clips of that video interview um, as part of our collection video. Once again, it'll be part of our blog post, which you can find on our Just Collect blog. Afternoon to James, Daniel, and Nick. Appreciate each and every one of you tuning in to today's episode. Once again, the big 4-0. We are turning 40 here at Trading Card Therapy. So getting back to the collection, there's not only hundreds of strip cards. There's like 160 or 70 baseball, well over 300 total. Of course, there's a bunch of boxing, actors and actresses, presidents. Um, but what is mind-boggling about this collection, there are... I just want to make sure I'm not misquoting, but I believe there are eight Bay Ruths. There are 11 Ty Cobbs. And for whatever it's worth, if you're a George Sisler fan, there's like 14 George Sislers. So it's really wild. And we gave them the evaluation after a couple hours of going through the cards. They, um, I believe, are on the same page as, part, as far as the evaluation of the offer. 
They did want to speak to the son who had done a lot of the research as well as their accountant to figure out the best way for them to deal with receiving the funds. So we'll keep all of you posted. Uh, he has told me that he'll get back to me at some point early next week. Fingers crossed that that happens. And we'll let everyone know what happens with this big strip card collection I looked at earlier today here in our central offices at Just Collect in Milburn, New Jersey. You might think that's all for today. That's all for today's episode of Trading Card Therapy, but it's far from it. I thought we were going to be leading off and sharing um, this new strip card collection that we are hoping to purchase today, but in due time we will. However, we did receive another collection in the mail. I'd already agreed upon the price for the graded component or the graded portion of it. There is um, tobacco cards, Tito sixes, and haven't had the chance, excuse me, or the opportunity to buy any Turkey Reds, T3s as they're affectionately known as in our industry. Some of the most beautiful baseball cards actually ever made, uh, but a handful of them in this collection. And so I know a lot of the folks out there who are watching or even listening might think that at Just Collect, we only buy you know fresh collections that are ungraded, but that is simply not true. The last collection um, that we bought before today, uh, or last major collection, was an over six-figure purchase of all PSA graded vintage, almost all baseball uh, sports cards from the 1950s and 60s. There was 136 PSA cards. It was over $100,000 that we spent. And we are actively buying not just fresh, ungraded um, vintage sports card collections, but we're always buying quality vintage graded collections. We will buy PSA. We will buy SGC. We will buy Beckett. We will buy ISA. And um, in some instances, we'll even buy GAI on vintage. So as far as um, this particular collection is concerned, I don't know exactly what else he has, but he did throw out there, and I'm going to show you, there's a portion of ungraded um, cards in his collection. They're all T206s. I told this individual that I would evaluate them upon receipt, and that's what we'll do. But let me show you, to start with, the T206s in this collection. And we know we're sending out a check today, so these cards have been purchased by us. You know, they're low to, I think there's a couple fours, um, but everyone loves T206s, more specifically Hall of Famers. And this collection is chock full of T206 Hall of Famers. So without any further delay, let me show off the Tito 06s from this collection that we just purchased that came in through the mail. You might ask, what does that mean? Well, I corresponded with this individual through email. We talked on the phone. We reached a deal. I did an evaluation for them, made an offer. We reached a deal. I said, because of the value of them, you don't have to worry about the expense of shipping them into us or uh, worry about the insurance. You could do it on our FedEx number. We have a whole program set up with folks that um, send us cards through the mail that are expensive. We will explain in detail if you want to reach out to me, Leighton at JustCollect.com, or hit me up on Instagram, Leighton underscore Sheldon, and I'd be happy to explain to you how our process works. But we've bought tens of millions of dollars of cards this way over the last 20 years. So first and foremost, there's one Ty Cobb in this collection. Now it's a one. You got some surface wear on the front there. But you know what? The rest of it, if you went like this, it's got good eye appeal, the red background. The back has seen better days, of course, with some paper loss. But, you know, it's not shocking on a SGC 1 to find paper loss or some back damage. So all in all, I don't think it's the best one I've ever seen, but certainly not the worst one. And it is of one of the most desirable cards in the set, a T206 Ty Cobb of the Red Portrait. So I'll run through all the Hall of Famers that just came in in this collection. This is one of my favorite cards in the Tito 6 set, not named Cobb, Matthewson, Cy Young, or Walter Johnson. The Willie Keeler with bat against the clouds in that background. I just think that's the cat's meow. Love this card. One of my favorite in the set. I don't think there's too many Beckett graded examples in this deal, but there is a Tito 6 or Fred Clark batting. And even Fred Clark, who's not a Upper echelon or well-known Hall of Famer, just a beautiful card. 
That's a Piedmont back. Jake Beckley, Hall of Famer. Well-centered for a PSA 4. Got good eye appeal. I like the collar on that KC flannel jersey. If you're enjoying today's show and you like training car therapy, please make sure you subscribe to our channel so you know each and every time we put out content. Chief Bender pitching no trees. I mean, you have to say for a one, this is a really good looking one with a polar bear back. Trees in the background. This one not as good looking or as an attractive as a one. Daniel Lynch from our very own Vintage Breaks community brings up an excellent point. SGC is a little bit more forgiving on grading strip cards. That being said, I think that the PSA set registry is a little more active on PSA than SGC uh, collecting sets. So I don't know what will be better off, uh, where to grade those strip cards. But we'll worry about that after we buy the collection. Fingers crossed we can. Frank Chance, yellow portrait. I do dig the overprint back. You can see it's kind of cool. Hal Chase Blue portrait. One of the better cards in the collection, Walter Johnson, hands at chest. Polar bear. A little bit more of a difficult back. Walter Johnson portrait. Here's a nice looking Tito Six Cy Young portrait. Really good looking uh, green background there, solid. You know, I can see from the back, you know, it's got some creasing and wear, but a really solid looking one. Joe Kelly. Rube Marquard. Excuse me. One of my favorite cards in the set. I love the background with the hands and thighs, Rube Marquard. If you're watching this video and you're able to see what I'm showing off, please let me know in the comments. Forget about the value. What's your favorite T206 based on aesthetics, based on the way it looks? This is one of the harder how chases to get holding a trophy. Hal Chase, pink portrait. I dig the card, uh, the Joe Birmingham. I like the horizontal cards in general in the 06 set, uh, James. Jack Chesbro, I believe this example is well-centered. Yeah, it is. It's nice. Hall of Famer. Fred Clark, portrait. Eddie Collins only has one card in the set. Some people call this a portrait. I mean, it is, but it's the only card he has in the set, and it's very desirable. It's actually been pretty hot. The late Jimmy Collins, Hall of Famer, well-centered four. Sam Crawford throwing. Sam Crawford batting. Johnny Evers, blue background. A little bit tougher than the others. Elmer Flick, only one card in the 06 set. It's a nice looking four. Miller Huggins hands and mouth can be followed by the Miller Huggins portrait, which I think seems to me to be a pretty easy portrait to get. Hugh Jennings, Hugh Jennings portrait. Matthewson dark cap. Good looking too. Polar bear back. Matthewson portrait. That one's a little rough. You know, you got an issue with the name. I appeal is decent on the rest of the card, but Chrissy Matthewson white cap. It's got an interesting stamp on the back. Robert Walton Jr. So that's the reason for the MK. Uh, 
Hope you're enjoying the show on IG today as well. Showing off this fresh collection that just came in the mail that we've already agreed upon the price. So we've had the good fortune to purchase this. Tris Speaker, only one card in the set. Everyone loves that card. Well, not everyone, but a lot of people do. Ruba Del Throwing. Bobby Wallace Portrait. Ed Walsh. It's become a popular card in recent years. Only has one in the set. Vic Willis. And another Vic Willis batting. So I will briefly show off the ungraded that this individual would like me to, whoa, excuse me, like me to assess. Good things the cards aren't all on holders. They're in those old little mini top loads for T206s. All right. So I will show you off the ungraded. There's some uh, good names in here. Addy Joss Portrait, Addy Joss Pitching. Nap Lajouet Portrait, Lajouet Batting, Lajouet Throwing. These are going to be great, even though they're, they're lower grade, collector grade. Still a run of Hall of Famers from the 06 set. Always welcomed here at Just Collect. Zach Wheat, Vic Willis Portrait. Clark Griffith batting. Bresnahan batting. Oh, that's an interesting stamp. Compliments of the season? I've not seen that stamp before. Let me know in the comments if you've seen the stamp before. It's kind of cool. Mordecai Brown. Three-finger Brown portrait. Clark Griffith portrait. Frank Chan's batting. Evers with bat. We Willie Keeler portrait. If you made it this far in today's show, I'm excited about the next group from this collection because I haven't had turkey reds in a little while. And there's a handful in this collection, and they're mostly Hall of Famers. And a Tinker Portrait, so I'll evaluate those. Get back to him within 24 hours. Excuse me. Oh, there's a few more. I guess they fell. You Duffy, Home Run Baker, John McGraw, Mordecai Brown. All right, now for the grand finale. Yeah, the Mordecai is very nice. All right, gang. So here is, uh, I don't know, about eight or ten turkey reds. First up, Clark Griffith in a one. Pretty good looking card for a one. Now, this one's an authentic. It's an Ed Walsh. Trying to get it in... Even though some of these are lower grade, they're some of my favorite cards ever made. Probably the highest grade one in the group, the John McGraw two and a half. I mean, that's just a beauty. If you like turkey reds, let me know if you have any in your collection in the chat. Harry Lord. Chief Bender. Someone got hungry and ate his corner, but Chief Bender is still Hall of Famer and a really cool card. Eddie Collins, authentic. Howie Cabinets, SGC authentic. Roger Bresnahan, Hall 
of Famer. Joe Tinker. Trying to catch him napping. One of the uh, more desirable scenes. It doesn't necessarily feature a desirable player, but these are really cool. Thanks, Tim. What's going on, Danny? And lastly, Bobby Wallace, Hall of Famer, SQC one and a half. So as you can see here at Just Collect, I'm always buying not just ungraded vintage or quality vintage collections that are fresh, that are ungraded, but we are always buying quality vintage graded cards from any of the major grading companies. If you want to know how to contact me, not go through our website, contact me direct, Leighton, L-E-I-G-H-T-O-N at justcollect.com. Usually get back to you within 24 to 48 hours. If it's cards we're interested in, I'll let you know. If it's cards we're not interested in, I'll let you know. And I'd be happy to talk to you, uh, you know, after we confer a little bit and you let me know what you have. You know, some of the basic questions I ask folks are, what do you have as an overall? Meaning you have complete sets, you have singles. What are a couple of the highlights of your collection? And maybe if you could share a couple photos. That really helps uh, get the process going. And as you can see in this particular case, this was an easy one, even though um, not everything was graded. The way we decided to handle it, uh, this gentleman and I, was we reached a deal on the graded T206s and Turkey Reds. They just came in today, so I'll cut them and check. And then the next day or so, I'll evaluate his T206s that are ungraded, let him know what I think they're worth, tell him what I could pay for them, and it'll be up to him to decide if he'd like to get a check or the card's back in the mail. And on that note, we're going to wrap up here on our 40th edition of Trading Card Therapy. I sincerely appreciate each and every one of you who tuned in today and have tuned in over the past 40 episodes, looking for another 40 more and many more after that. Thanks, everybody.